and welcome back to the ZZ Mill Show. It's ZZ Mills back up in this big. You motherfuckers have missed that, haven't you? I know there's going to be some pussy hole in the comments that's going to be like, oh, Z, can you just stop doing that, please? It's so annoying. Well, suck your mum, okay? That's it. And that's my favourite line over the quarantine period. Pussy hole and suck your mum. That's how I feel about a lot of things over this quarantine period. That's how I feel about corona. That's how I feel about being stuck in the house. This is the first time that I've done Hot Topics in I don't even know how long. It's been a long time. It's been a long time coming. How's everyone doing? How's corona treating you? How's everyone handling it? Me personally, I've, it's kind of been like a roller coaster. Um, I've been made furlough at work, which is it's quite nice, I can't lie to you. I mean, you're getting paid to, abs to do absolutely nothing. You can't complain. It's just a weird time. Really, really, really weird time. Who's been getting sex in this time? Have I been having sex? I don't really want to lie, because last week we had a man of God on here, or some people call him the man of God, some people call him the devil, who knows? We had Pastor Toby on the show last week. I interviewed him, and we had mixed reviews. A lot of people thought that I was the CIA. I think people thought I was the Met Police. I was like some sort of trained interrogator, investigator that was sitting down with a member of ISIS. We were trying to find out when they was gonna, when their next hit was. I just don't wanna be in the comments on YouTube like, well, first of all, let me tell you, big titty, one, two, three. The reason why this happened was because da, da, da. So I just refrained from reading the comments. I think a lot of people were disappointed, angry, annoyed. I think they thought that Pastor Toby was gonna come on the show and like draw blood while he sat across from me to confess about all the fraud that he has committed. So they've not actually found hardcore evidence, enough evidence to, um, to press charges against this man, okay? Uh, he's been interviewed by Met Police, Scotland Yard, whoever else. And you thought that I was gonna sit down with him and I was gonna be able to get some sort of confession out of him or enough evidence so that maybe the BBC or the Met Police or whoever else watched this interview then could go and be like, well, in this inter... Like, people, be realistic, okay? He's never sat down with anybody, okay, before. Well, not like this. Um, the press releases that they've ever released as a as SPAC nation have always been very vague. He came on the show. To me, he was very transparent. A lot of people was like, oh, you didn't go hard on him. I honestly, I can't win with, with my audience or the people that watch my show. If I spent the whole show cutting him off, you lot would have gone in the comments and told me, oh, you didn't even give him a chance to speak. This is the first time he's ever spoken and all you did for the whole interview was cut him off. What if he was gonna say something that could have caught him out? Or what if he was slipped up? You didn't even give him a chance. Every time I do an interview, all I see in the comments is, ZZ never lets her guests speak. All she does is cut them off. The one time I decide, do you know what? This is the time actually when you do let this guy speak because number one, no one has ever heard his side of the story. No one has ever really heard him speak on the matters or the people or the things that have been brought forward to him. Let me let him speak. And some people even said, you know what? I'm glad you let him speak because we actually got to see his true character. And whether or not you liked that true character, that's another thing. It's just annoying because it's just like, people don't use their logic. And all you people that think you can do better, contact him. You and your church, contact him and set up a camera and ask for an interview and quote as much Bible scriptures as you want. That's not why I wanted to interview him. It wasn't to go back and forth with Bible scriptures and do Bible clashes, okay, about scriptures. As I said in my interview, no matter what I say, he's gonna say something else. So what we're gonna do is spend 40 minutes going, yeah, but this Bible scripture says this, and he's gonna go, well, no, if you read this Bible scripture, he said, I ain't got the time in it. Like, I wanted to hear his side of the story. I wanted to hear what he had to say. Maybe if there was a part two, then we could go a little bit deeper. But what you have to understand, like I said, this is the first time he sat down. I have 40 minutes to an hour to discuss stuff that has been happening over eight months. Usually things like this are maybe done in a three-part documentary or a two-part documentary. Do you understand? So chill the fuck out, okay? I gave TK and another young lady the opportunity to come on the show and speak about everything that's happened in Spac Nation, okay? When TK was doing his marches because he really cared about the youth, um... I asked him to come on the show. He agreed to come on the show on the day he cancelled. He tried to say he's lying. I've got voice notes and I've got emails, okay, to prove this, okay? He cancelled on the day or his team cancelled. What's he going to say? His team didn't realise. But this is the same team that decided to message me 
literally an hour after we dropped the trailer to be like, we feel like TK should come on the show to share his story. No, I don't want TK on my show. Shall I tell you why? Because what would have been better is if TK came on my show beforehand and when I sat down with Pastor Toby, I could have put forward all the stuff that I spoke about with TK. But TK chose not to come on the show because he didn't like what I said about Fredo. Imagine, you care so much about the youth that Fredo, who I don't even know if you know, you decided to put that in front of your care for the youth and sharing your story about SPAC Nation. Now, the other girl that said that she was had fraudulent activity done against her name, she was supposed to come on the show and on the day she said she was sick, okay? So what do you guys want me to do? All these other things, oh, you should have gotten the exposure. What do you think would have happened if I said to Pastor Toby, oh, and um, there's an account on um, YouTube and Instagram where they basically do voiceovers and talk about what happens in the church? Where's the evidence? So for him to look at me and be like, okay, where, whoa, what, who is this person? Do you know who this person is? No. I ain't got time to be looking stupid in it. People in my DM say, oh, I know someone that was in the houses and they left the house in the state and the rent. And how, where's the evidence? Why would I come to him with this stuff? Why? If you go on the internet and type SPAC Nation, the information is very vague. It's just like, this is what has been, there's 20 to 30 cases, there's this, there's that, there's etc. I don't know all these little in-click stories that everyone seems to have to, to know. As an interviewer, I don't really want to go to people with these little inside stories that everybody has because I just think that it makes me look stupid uh, because there's no proof there. If people are going to send me pictures and proofs and stuff like that, Fair enough. All now, all I've just seen is essays of, yeah, my brethren used to go to church and this is that. Okay, where's your brethren? Because two people had a chance to come on the show to share their story and they both chose not to. Okay, fair enough. Anyway, I won't speak about it any longer. TK, I'm actually above him. Okay, I, I don't even want to spend too long on it. Him and Vic decided to have a little uh, 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 Insta live story. I can't chat to a man that live on live, innit? That literally live on live. Their, their whole life is being on live. Like, I can't do that in it. I just can't. Anyway, so I am overall happy with the interview. Um, people can say what they want. Bottom line is he came on my show. End of. End of story. That's all i got to say. Whatever reasons you think he came on the show, oh, because he was, he's spun Z and all this stuff. I don't know if staying quiet and listening to someone equals being spun. Do you get what I mean? But whatever. If people actually watch my show back, I've never actually said anything really bad about SPAC Nation. I've actually always said, I don't understand how people can be forced into taking out money. And I've also said, I think that there's actually nothing wrong with them kind of using worldly stuff to draw in the young people because that's what appeals to young people. So if they want to use drill to draw in young people, then okay, fine. That That's what makes sense. I've never been anti SPAC Nation if anyone actually watched my show. So, you know, maybe you guys should do your research on the interviewer the next time before you come in the comments expecting me to draw blood from my man. Okay, thank you. Anyway, thanks for watching and thanks for the views. <laughs> and we was trending number six in the whole of the UK on YouTube. So regardless, we done the numbers and I'm happy. Six Nine has officially come out of prison and he literally crashed YouTube. Within 24 hours, he had 43 million. On his live, he had 2 million on Instagram. I checked in under the live because I just thought, I have to see this, like, this is, I talk about popular culture stuff. I have to go on there. Even if I didn't, I'm lying, I'd still be on there. And I'm in two minds about um, Six Nine. I think that, I just think it's really weird that, um, there's this whole like thing of no snitching and all this stuff. And I just think it's, I'm really bored of it. I'm really bored of it. I don't, I think 6 9 um got himself too far in and his pretend story caught up on him. He was a pretend gangster. He was never a part of the Bloods. He was never a part of any, like he wasn't gang. He was never gang gang in it. He was just there. They used him as a scapegoat. I think what he's doing now is all a pretense. And I honestly think that, he's never gonna be able to live a normal life. I think he's always gonna be looking over his shoulder. And in the end, was it worth it? Was it worth it to be doing pretend? But I just think that he thought that the pretend life was never gonna catch up on it. I thought he thought he'd be able to do all of this pretend, uh, rub people up the wrong way. He would have all these people protecting him and then he'd be able to exit stage left once it was all done. But that never happened, do you get what I mean? Um, and all this stuff about the streets and the stuff. I just, I always wonder, I'd love to maybe speak to like an ex-gang member or somebody, because I just think, how how do people have so much loyalty to the streets when the streets don't have no loyalty to you? As of like, it's, do you know what I mean? There's no, there is no loyalty. 
Like, I, I just don't get it. So many people have died from being on the streets or being loyal to the streets. I, I, I can't comprehend it. And maybe I can never comprehend it because I've never been a part of that life. But I don't get how you can be so loyal to something that will literally take your life within 0 0.5 seconds. Like, I just don't understand. So I will never understand this whole, yeah, this, this, that, etc. cetera, bloody, 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 blah. I just think it's a whole mess. And I just think, it, even look, he did that whole stuff. He broke the internet. He then... um did a video and some girl who his neighbor saw him put it up on the on social media and apparently now he's had to move house and this is going to be his life moving forward he's just always going to be looking over his shoulder so you can have all this money you can have all these cards but what's the point because you're literally going to be living in fear your whole family is going to be living in fear i just don't i just think it's it's great like that he's making all this money but what does it even mean anyway moving on onto a lighter note congratulations to um, um, I was going to say, I don't know if I should say so, congratulations, but congratulations to Swarm. Swarm, sorry, no disrespect. You know, I never know any of these guys' names, H and Itch and all these things. Um, yeah, they all just sound all up in the air. Swarms, like, um, let me tell you something, Vicky. Yeah. I mean, I think it's great that he's got one million followers. Um, he got he got to one million and then basically Instagram told him that he better not do any of these um, quarantine, um, shaking the bum things. Um, or his page is going to get shut down. He must have thought he was above <laughs> Instagram or I don't know what he thought. Went and done a live and his Instagram got shut down. But it's back. It's one million and it's back to the original thing. Did anyone actually know of Swarms before this? Does anybody actually know of any of Swarms' song? Not even on a disrespectful thing, because you know if I was being disrespectful, I'd just say, I couldn't name you one Swarm song. I know he's just done this one with KSI, but I th feel like this is what has obviously propelled him. Great, everything, that's great, that's lovely. But I'm just curious to see how he's going to maintain the following and the and, and the hype. Because once everyone comes out of lockdown, let's be honest, no one's going to care about that twerking radio and all quarantine radio, to be honest. We've done it because it was really entertaining and it's something to pass the time. But I just want to know the transition that he's going to make into the twerking to his music. And even when he done the celebration of going to one million, he he done like Megan the Stallion instead of doing, he's played Megan the Stallion or someone instead of doing his own song. Like, I just thought that was a big rookie error. Like, everyone is on your dick, literally. Why would you not premiere a new song that you're, is your own song? Why would you, like, have girls shaking their ass to somebody else's song? I just, I just don't understand how that, logically, how that works. Tory Lanez as well, Quarantine Radio has popped off. I have my reservations about that. Not because I care about these, I'm not a feminist. I've said this loads of times, I'm not a feminist. I know people think just because I'm really strong headed that means I'm automatically a feminist. No, I'm actually not. I just don't understand with Quarantine Radio how as a feminist this makes sense. As I said, I'm not a feminist. If you're a feminist, how do you watch Quarantine Radio or Swarms is Live? It is degrading to women, okay? It's sexualizing women. Whether these women um, have gone on there to be sexualized, they are being sexually objectified, okay? Man in the comments are doing wet signs and peach signs. No one's talking about if they're academically smart or what they have to offer the world or what, they, what their dreams are, what their aspirations are. It's all linked to sex, sexually objectifying them. So that is the whole point of one of the things about feminism is that we do not want to be sexually objectified. We don't want to be seen as our bodies, but yet, here women are, after women have fought for years and years and years, going on live and pouring milk over them. And what do they get? Everyone's like, oh, they get money to their OnlyFans. Bruv, Tory Lanez half the time didn't even pin their OnlyFans. So how did you even see it? And why would anybody put money in their OnlyFans when they've seen it already? And it's like a fucking um, conveyor belt of ass. It's not like, oh, okay, until I get $150 in my OnlyFans account, and then I'm going to start twerking. It was twerk and then oh you can put money in there if you want there was no benefit of these women apart from maybe getting a couple more followers i just don't see the point of it and i just wish women would stop dressing it up twerking as female empowerment it's not female empowerment you just want to shake your ass and that's fine that doesn't mean you're a hoe or you're less than or anything good for you do what you want but i beg please stop calling it female empowerment and liberation. It's neither or. It's just you want to be on the gram and having a good time. It's nothing to do with empowerment and it's nothing to do with liberation, okay? Absolutely nothing. Enjoy yourself, but stop putting these little sprinkles on top to make yourself feel good about just wanting to shake your ass.
Do you know what I mean? That's like me saying, I enjoy sucking dick and I'm empowered. No, I just enjoy sucking dick. It's something I enjoy, I like it. I ain't gonna sugarcoat it. I'm not gonna try and make it sound like I'm sexually liberated. No, I'm a nasty little bitch sometimes. End of, do you know what I mean? That's it. Oh, so yeah, obviously Boris Johnson has basically come out and said we can have unlimited exercise. We can go and meet a friend from another household, but only one. So if you've got like a dad and a mom, then only your dad can come outside or only your mom can come outside. <laughs> Weird. You can go to the park. So you can do outside activities with your friend from another household, I think. If you want to go to work, you can, but try not to get on London transport. Try to walk, because I'm really going to walk to central London from like where I live in North London. The R rate is now what we're watching, not really the death toll. I think a lot of people are really annoyed with him because it just wasn't clear. And I think he basically does what every man does. It's just vague so that there's no accountability. You know, men, when they'll be like, yeah, we're together, but we're not together. Do you get what I mean? Like me and you, we know our thing in it. We know how our thing is set. So I'm I'm here for you in it. Still, I can do my thing and you can do your thing. If you do your thing, it lets me know what you really think about this relationship. Do you get what I'm saying? But still, we're not together in it. But yeah, that's basically what Boris Johnson done. Like. He, he was so vague so that there's no accountability, but still he can say he said something. Do you get what I mean? I am, I'm, I don't know. Like I've, I'm still, I'm a bit wary of everything. It's a, it's weird. It's a weird time. You don't know what to believe anymore. There's so many conspiracy theories at the beginning of all of this. It was the 5G towers. I, th I feel like maybe soon we'll come back to some sort of normality, whatever that's gonna be, our new normal. It's, it's a very interesting time. People are just probably gonna start doing their own thing. There's fines now, 3,500 or something. If you're breaking the rules but what are the actual rules how would they know if if this is my family or if i've known him before like how do they monitor that how do they how do they police that i think it'd be very interesting to see i think it also would be very interesting to see if there's a second a second wave big up to something that's been getting me through quarantine no signal radio and the ns10 v10 absolutely amazing nigerians you know that you you lied, you lied, you lied. You have a cheek to be getting onto Pastor Toby because you all lied. You all lied when it came to WizKid and uh, World Boss vibes. There were certain songs, yeah, that vibes 110% won, but all you lot was um, voting tactically, okay? All of you lot were voting very tactically, and I don't blame you, whatever. But big up to No Signal Radio, I love it. Even the, um, the other day on Monday night, it was Ian Wright and Julie Adenuga. And it was really good. I love Julie because she's so she was so cheeky, but she was so respectful at the same time. And Ian Wright was so lovely as well. He was, everyone was like calling him uncle. The vibes was good. He was like singing over the songs while he was playing. It was 80s, V's, 90s. And it was really good, really good vibes. So big up to um, Scully and everyone over at No Signal Radio. I think it's really good. It's black owned station and it's just good vibes. It's really good vibes. There's always some sort of war going on on Twitter. Oh, and it's just, I tell you, Twitter is a draining place. Like I used to think Instagram was draining, but Twitter, oh God damn, you gotta be, you gotta be thick skin for that shit, okay? Twitter is mad, like mad. And I think that's why when uh, Pastor Toby said it last week and Twitter being a judgmental place, and I agreed because all the stuff that happened a couple of weeks back with Nella Rose. The way I saw everybody just jump on Nella Rose, yeah, that's what I just thought, like, sometimes we're wild, like, we don't defend each other, we're so quick to just jump on each other, to bring each other down before we even hear, like, an explanation or anything like that. And I've experienced it sometimes on Twitter, and I think that's why I resonated when he said that, because Twitter is a wild place. Like, Twitter will hang you out to dry. If the masses of Twitter come for you, black Twitter come for you, listen, it's over word, honey. Oh, one thing that I think is just so corny is Fraud Bay. It's just like, why would you go on somebody's live and just talk about a girl that you've been with before? Like, I'm not Nikita Johnson's biggest fan, but still, like, I think it's distasteful and I think it's sad. I should be sorry for a lot of things. Here it begins. Sorry, Charles, you're not a fucking king. Sorry, Nikita, but your pussy stinks. That's why I treated you like shit when we had a ting. Like, any man that goes about talking about what girl they've slept with, man blew her back out normal. It's like, really, bro? Seriously? Like, he's he's just corny as fuck. I interviewed him, and I can say the guy, I just, yeah. He's weird, he's just annoying, it's just, whatever. And you can't even blame women, because you don't know when a man's gonna turn into a cornball. You actually don't know. You can meet a guy, and you can think he's like, dapper Don, he's gonna treat you right, he's not, he would never be one to chat your name, 
you don't know, that's the thing. So you can't even be like, oh, girls should be careful. You can't even say that because men are out here just chatting your name for fun. You know, they always, men always want to get onto women about, oh, women just want clout. Men want clout. Anyway, that's my little roundup of hot topics and what's been happening. You know what to do. Like, subscribe. We'll be back next week. Um, tell your friends, tell your dad, tell everybody. ZZ is back.